we are uh, all right so it's time it's nine o'clock um, yes so let's get started radhe radhe good morning good evening everyone welcome to today's edition of daily wisdom from bhagavad gita uh, let's get started by invoking the blessings of god and guru like we always do we have a lot of stuff to cover discuss and and lot of and surprise coming up your way as well but we'll get started for now okay guru brahma guru vishnu guru devo maheshwar ha guru sakshat par brahma tasmay shri guruve namaha vasudeva sutam devam kamsachanurmardanam devaki paramanandam krishnam vande jagat gurum krishnam vande jagat gurum okay radha radha good morning good evening to all of you hope you having a great start to your day uh, i had a wonderful day today it's a friday eve today it's an eve before the weekend eve okay so hope you're excited about that so today we are going to pick up 3.35 as part of our recap series um we will talk about it it's a fascinating verse like all the verses from bhagavad gita so i'm looking forward to the discussion today i would recite it you welcome to follow along shreyan swadharmo vigunah பரதர்மோயாவனி டைரெக்ட்லி ஃப்ரம் குலோக தட்ஸ் குட் இட்ஸ் ஆர் குட் ஃபார்ச்சூன் அண்ட் more good fortune for the bunny i guess to be associated with such a beautiful satsang okay who's going to recite it sandhya may i want to call it out oh, you are okay yeah radhe radhe actually i was facing some issue with my computer no worries now it's okay yeah, bunny from golok samji please go ahead radhe radhe ஸ்ரேயான் ஸ்வதர்மோ விகுணக பரதர்மாஷ்டிதர்மே நிதனம் ஸ்ரேய பரதர்மோ பயாவன் i'll give preference to the ones who have their video on so i will encourage everyone to keep the video on yes please uh, good rupa ji you turned it on radhe radhe please go ahead radhe radhe everyone shayam dharmo vigunah padadharma sva anushtitara anushtitara ஸ்வதர்மாஷ்டித ஸ்வதர்மேனிதனம் 
राधे 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 संध्या जी राधे राधे रिवन श्रेयान स्वधर्मो विगुण पर धर्मा स्वनुष्ठि स्वधर्मे निधन श्रेय पर धर्मो भयाव राधे राधे नाइस सुमेश राधे राधे All right, two more hands and then we get started. Aparna ji, Radhe Radhe, please go ahead. Radhe Radhe. Sreyan swadharmo vigunaha paradharmat swanushtetat swadharme nidhanam shreyaham paradharmo bhayavaham. Very nice. Thank you, Aparna ji. Riya ji, when you will turn on your video, we will make you recite two times but you can go ahead today radhe radhe thank you radhe 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 shreyan swadharmo vigunah paradharma svanushtita swadharme nidhanam shreyah paradharmo bhayavah Very nice, thank you. Okay, okay. So let's get started, Radhe Radhe. So in this shloka, now Lord Krishna is saying it's a very okay. I mean, it it always seems like a stereotype, right? Broken record. It's a very important shloka. Of course, it is. Has it has to be an important shloka because Lord Krishna has not wasted even a single word in all the seven hundred shlokas. Now in this one, Lord Krishna is saying that it is far better to perform one's natural. prescribed duty though tinged with faults okay so the two things natural duty tinged with faults until we perfect it of course right perfect science of work then to perform another's prescribed duty though perfectly in fact it is preferable to die in the discharge of one's duty than to follow the path of another which is fraught with danger okay so uh, we're very clearly stating that once natural see the previous one he spoke about the habits and tendencies that we have there's a reason why we have that so he said work even in uh, management it is said that work on your strengths as opposed to repairing your weaknesses of course you have to repair your weaknesses but your odds of success of working on your strengths is much higher than as opposed to focusing too much on repairing some of very very weak things that you have right beyond a point it's important to understand what are your strengths and keep harnessing those a spike in life is better than a little bit of this 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 and too many things but anyways let's move on and go deeper into the shloka so today we are going to talk about you see so many personalities all our successful personalities okay be yourself or copy someone else this is the concept we are going to talk about and what bhagavad gita in this particular verse is is going to talk about how to become the best version of ourselves by the way we'll have a continuation of it tomorrow because we can cover only so much today uh, talking about what is true success okay and how do we become the best version of ourselves we'll we'll have a little bit discussion additional discussion on this topic tomorrow as well but let's get started uh give me a sec i think i'll have to stop share and i need to share it again because i did not share click now it should be okay are you able to see the screen okay sir great so we've been talking about uh, the sail guiding the ship so this is like our habits and tendencies which is pretty much guiding us throughout the course of our life all the decisions that we make the kind of thought process that we have and uh, some of our uh, uh, you know things that we feel impelled to do almost uh, like an autopilot they are all driven by our habits and tendencies so that is how we started with this discussion uh, in from the previous shlokas now we will take it further now in this particular shloka if you look at it how many times this word is used just to get it shreyan swadharmo viguna par dharmat swanu swanushtitat swadharme nidhanam shreya par dharmo bhayavah 
Dharma word has been used four times in this particular shloka. Good. You get 100 marks for that if you got it right. So, um, Dharma word is used four times. And it, this is a commonly used word if you look at it, Hinduism, Buddhism as well. And it is one of the most elusive words to translate into English language as well. The language has certain limitations. Sanskrit, if you look at it, it is, it is so rich that every word, depending upon the swar and the recitation, it's the context or meaning could change. That is rich Sanskrit is. And then Hindi also has certain translations, but then when it comes to English, there are things that you can loosely translate. You cannot directly translate. And uh, Dharma is one of those words. Now, we are loosely related to the words like, you know, righteousness, good conduct, duty, noble quality. Um, they, they define uh, an aspect of this uh, word, but it is not all encompassing, whatever words, because words do fall short of understanding that completely. Having said that, let's continue, uh, you know, to explore a little more. Dharma, it comes from the root word three, which means dharan karne yogya, or that means something which is worth imbibing. Right? Responsibilities, duties, thoughts, and actions that are appropriate for us. That is what dharma you can call. Okay, this is my dharma. And what is my dharma? You know, we fall into dharma sankat at times. That is also a very loaded word. Right? Dharma sankat. Are you are putting me in dharma sankat. So this big grandiloquent word comes as well, right? Now, for example, uh, the dharma of the soul is to love God. It is the central law of our being. Now, did I know it? Of course not. Okay, I came to know about, you know, when I met Swamiji, I had no clue. We'll have our, inter our own interpretation of dharma. What is our dharma? What is our dharma? What we should be doing? So we will try to uh, simplify this conversation because it's a pretty uh, elevated concept that the dharma of the soul is to the God. And this is the central law of our being. So let's uh, break it down and try to understand. By the way, all these terms that we talk about are dharma, they are innate to our nature as well. Spirituality is just helping us discover it by you know, figuring out that what we are trying to figure out is already residing within us. Like this guy who's looking inside the refrigerator, all these innate qualities which correspond to dharma or our, or our natural position of the soul is already within us. What we are doing in spirituality is nothing but a self-discovery uh, journey where we are simply rediscovering things that we are innately born with. All right, so let's move on. Swadharma, let's look at this definition again. It is one's duty as an individual in accordance with the Vedas, as per the scriptural injunctions. It has a couple of categories, okay? That, that's what we're going to talk about. Now, the prefix swa, swa, like in Hindi, Sanskrit, we know it means self. Swadharma is our personal dharma, which is the dharma applicable to our context, situation, maturity, and profession in life. So dharma can change as our context in life changes. Right? We are going to talk about Varnashram aspect of it as well, depending upon uh, the station in which in station of life that you are in, your swadharma uh, could change because it is context driven. Situation driven, context driven, maturity driven, and you know profession driven as well. And then as we grow spiritually, it keeps on changing by asking Arjun to follow his swadharma. Sri Krishna is telling him to follow his profession and not change it because somebody else may be doing something else. Okay, but he's telling him in accordance with that. Now, within that Swadharma, let's understand this. This has two bifurcations to it. One is called Appara Dharma, which is material duties or mundane duties. Okay. However, since a vast majority of humankind, they do not possess spiritual perspective, the Vedas also prescribe duties for those who see themselves as a body. Okay, this the other one. It's actually the other way. It is called a paradharma is material and paradharma is spiritual. Okay, so paradharma 
Aparadharma uh, is material duties which are defined by one's ashram, basically the Varnashram Dharam that we spoke about yesterday. And Paradharma is spiritual duty. Now, depending upon whether you consider yourself a body or a soul, that dharma is applicable to you. And since most of us, if not all, consider ourselves as this body, designation is our name, our profession, uh, we are so-and-so, we are son and daughter of so-and-so, we are mother and father of so-and-so. Because we are in bodily conception, the Varnashram dharam is applicable to us. Based on which station of life we are in, we have to follow that to the letter T. However, when you start growing spiritually, maturing spiritually, and you start understanding your true identity is not that of, of a body, but that of a soul, then the higher dharma, then your bodily dharma is called paradharma, spiritual dharma, where it is the ultimate thing is to develop love and serve God. That's it. Nothing else. Right now, we are watering the leaves. Paradharma is watering the root. As simple as that. Okay. So whether you consider yourself as a soldier or a kshatriya or a lawyer or a doctor and or a humanitarian or somebody philanthropist, they are all at the bodily level. They are not at the soul level at yet. Soul level dharma is basically to love and basically uh, serve God. That is a higher dharma. But not everybody is ready for it and that is why Lord Krishna starts with a lower message to Arjun that, okay, you are thinking I'm going to kill. That means you are at a bodily level right now. And since you are at a bodily level, it's better to do your duty, uh, which is your duty at the bodily platform. And what is your duty? You have to go with your innate nature. And what is your nature? You are a Kshatriya. So this is where this whole argument is being presented so logically by Lord Krishna. I hope you're with me. So he's telling him about a dharma which is situated at a lower platform. But because Arjun is not ready for it, at least he's pretending not to be ready for it. That is why he's starting with this dharma. But for some people, Bhagavad Gita ends there only. That Krishna told Arjun to fight and that's where Bhagavad Gita ends. No, this is just the beginning. He tells him to fight because Arjun is not ready for the higher message, right? Okay, until he reaches the later chapters. But at this point, just understand you are a Kshatriya, do Dharma in accordance with your current position of being a Kshatriya. But then Krishna is going to tell, now I'm going to tell you the science of work as well. When you do it, what is it that you need to put in your head? What is the consciousness or the mindset you need? So that your act that you are going to do as part of your Dharma is not binding. It is non-binding and liberating. That is where he talks about Buddhi Yoga. Where karam yoga, karam vikaram, akaram concepts come. And then furthermore, he goes on to explain the higher principles around, you know, gyan yoga and bhakti yoga and the concepts of surrender and stuff like that. But he starts with this. And that's why Bhagavad Gita is not just about fighting the war, but understanding the context and seeing fighting is fine, but the consciousness that you need to imbibe in doing whatever act that you're doing, you're also fighting a war in our day-to-day -day lives. Right, Our mind is afflicted with so many problems, so many challenges come our way. Somebody is having a family problem, somebody with spouse, somebody's kids are not cooperating. Tons of issues. So it's kind of fighting a war every day in our mind. How do you arm yourself with the right tools so that when you're fighting this war, you're not incurring binding karma is essentially what Bhagavad Gita tells us. So I hope this concept of the dharma is clear. Swa, if you consider swa as body, then varnashram dharam. But if you consider so as soul, you have already reached that, then attaching it to, you know, God basically or serving God is the foremost dharma. And whenever there is a conflict between your bodily dharma and spiritual dharma, the spiritual dharma takes precedence. It's very simple. See, Swamiji beautifully said that. Somebody asked him, you know, when we feel um, so emotional about our relationships, Right, with our, for our kids, relatives, parents, you know, it's our duty, poor people, you know, who's going to take care of them and this and that. So Swamiji said that is very well, right? In this bodily conception, you feel it that way, which is again noble thought. However, when you will start understanding the deeper, you know, your true identity as a soul, right? And understand who your spiritual parents are, that will also bring in tears to your eyes. That what have we done for them so far? Nothing. 
we have just taken 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 um with with very little or no sense of gratitude and focused on only the bodily relatives and relations lifetime after lifetime after lifetime so he said when you that realization will start dawning upon you it will you will start shedding tears but to reach that state also requires a bit of a purity it doesn't happen so easily so i think we're going to tackle some question around it the attachment part of it uh, you know i got a question yesterday that how do we get detached from our kids okay and first of all i would question do we really need to right so we'll talk about that as well so so this is the topic we are going to talk about a little bit today now lord krishna is emphasizing this point dramatically by saying it is better to die in the faithful performance of one's duty than to be in the unnatural position of doings and others another duty before we get into that let's talk a little bit about dharma part of it now one of the things that gets come, comes across is that what does it mean you become you know completely uh, like a stone towards your relationships you don't feel anything for them and if you don't feel anything for them how will we take care of them right immediately your mind will repel you say this is a revolutionary concept doesn't make sense but that's not the case you still do your duties but you change start working on your consciousness around it so rather than being an owner of that relationship you simply replace it with a mindset of i am a trustee and when you do that you know things will start changing a little bit see when a cashier is um, you go and deposit money in the bank so you give it to the cashier and cashier starts counting it and the cashier deals with tons of money throughout the day and that cashier might be a greedy guy loves money as well in his personal life but that person is completely you know immune to the fact that this is not my money because he's just being a trustee there he simply counts it puts it where it belongs because the mindset is so deeply ingrained that this is just my job i cannot be thinking oh my god i'm seeing so much money in my hand can i just have it for myself and all that mindset which is not there because he knows it's a job that he's doing okay he's he's a trustee so that a similar kind of a consciousness needs to come in in our relationship as well where we have to do it to the best of our ability with an understanding we are simply a trustee before they became our kids or we they became our parents or we became their kids ultimately we are all the kids of god to begin with and he's he's has a plan for everyone so when we have that it not only brings in a sense of security that okay i'm going to do my bit but when i start worrying about it what's going to happen to them when i go away or i need to do you know something extra for them our whole life goes around accumulating and passing it on to generation from generation to generation right we forget about earning parmarthon and you know spend our life just worrying about things because we think we own them they belong to us actually if you think of it we are simply a trustee everything is a trustee kind of a mindset right that shivaji story is there where his guru shivaji looks at his guru he is begging so he goes and says guru ji here is he writes in a chit that i offer my entire kingdom to your feet guru ji takes and says all right i'll accept it he accepts it and then he says okay now i give it back to you and you continue to rule as a service to me as a trustee of your kingdom so shivaji was ruling before and even after what changed the fact that now he is no longer considering himself as a king but a servant or a trustee at that point so similarly when we think about our relationships it's a huge privilege to raise a kid or to be able to serve our family but we take it a little too far where we make it a cause for worry and attachment and you know shedding tears for them and worrying going overboard that is what god is saying start putting it in perspective because if you will not do that um, then anyway de facto plan is always there you continue to incur binding karma you continue to stay weak you will be vulnerable and you will keep repeating lifetime after lifetime not with the same set of relatives you know you think that okay if i don't have this person you know i cannot live my life and the same thing you feel for different people in different lives so the rules are changing that's all it is the soul departs on its journey and no never to be seen again so for you to come across the same soul is as as the odds are as much as you know the two waves coming together emanating together from the ocean bed and then meeting again they they they, they just go on their ways and never to be seen and meet meet again 
So that is the concept. Rather than being an owner of all the relationships, if we start bringing in the concept of being a trustee, that will start putting the over attachment that we feel towards people and relationships around in perspective. And that is what Krishna is telling us to start exercising. Right? It seems like a revolutionary. Oh my God! How I stop going to attach my mind to my kid and stuff like that. But of course, you have to practice it. If not today, maybe tomorrow. You will learn it the hard way. But they are individual souls on their journey. It's a privilege that they have chosen as a parent or a relative in this life. Let's impart it to the best of our ability. Along the way, if we can give them a spiritual uplift, nothing like it. Even God will be pleased. But beyond that, everybody has their own journey. So we find it very difficult to let go of that part. And that's something we need to practice. If we don't practice it, we know what the result is, right? You'll keep worrying and you will have your eyes open in the middle of the night and worrying about things which, you know, it's it's not a good spot to be. Okay, so let's move on from dharma to best version of ourselves. Now, the concept that we need to talk about it, you know, this I love this quotation. Einstein had said that everybody is a genius. But if you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree, it will live its whole life believing that it is stupid. Unfortunately, our educational system is like that, right? They expect everybody to score high, high 90s or perfect percentiles. And, and that is the only judging criteria. But everybody is endowed with different kind of a script or a music. So it is said that understanding, see, giving everybody a unique music, it God's gift to us. Understanding that music and giving it back for the service of the Lord is our gift back to him. So everybody is endowed with some kind of a music. It's just that we never come to know about it, right? Because we are typically uh, driven by what society people are telling us, okay, do this, do this, do that. And we really don't understand what we are good at and, and usually lead a life dictated by, you know, what people are telling or, or others' opinions. Now, Lord Krishna is saying that, uh, you know, he's saying this point very dramatically by saying that it is better to die in the faithful performance of one's duty than to be a natural position of doings and others' duty. Okay. So in other words, what he's saying is, do what is best in you. Just be yourself. Recognize who am I? What am I? What are my deficiencies? Accept them. What are my strong points? It's important to have that. So it's essentially he's giving that SWOT analysis. SWOT analysis we do in corporates, in management to teach you. So he's saying that SWOT analysis, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, threats, it will help you build on what you do well to address what you're lacking, to minimize risk, to take the greatest possible advantage of chances for success. So just because the grass may seem greener on the other side, deceptively greener on the other side, don't give up what you have. So for that, you need an awareness. And people may come back, how do I know what am I good at? Yes, I'm you know, still trying to figure out. And it's an ongoing journey. Uh, but God says, you know, you do that self-discovery. That's part of your spirituality as well, where you understand yourself. See, we go around, um, you know, finding things or discovering things around and trying to change people around. While the fact of the matter is we, we don't even know how, what, who we are or what we are good at or how our mind operates. So he said, oh, understand that part, invest on yourself and then do the best that you can do as opposed to trying to imitate somebody just because it may seem cool or you may think this is a sure shot or the quickest formula for success, right? You see, people keep it changing things. They're never sure of themselves. So Lord Krishna is saying, no, that's that's not the way to go. You are endowed with something. First, understand that and then keep on progressing on that path as opposed to keep on keeping on copying others where you might not be if Tendulkar just because he can wield the bat well and somebody puts him at the job of beating the clothes, right? The both things look pretty much similar. You know, what would have happened? That mon monster's ad was there, right? So the thing is, you have to be in the right profession to make the best use of your skills. And uh, you should not be looking at copying others, right? A lot of people, they give up their job prematurely just because they they see a very big entrepreneurial story and they think they are going to make it big in life. But uh, uh, may or may not work. But the point here is that uh, the copying is not at all recommended by Lord Krishna. In this particular case, why he's saying that is because Arjun is trying to copy a sannyasi here. Okay, let's look at it in context why Lord Krishna is saying. He's saying, okay, I'm going to, it's better to, you know, not go through this bloodshed if the ultimate to goal of life is to take a sannyas, then why should I not just give it up? He's going to t t say that later. 
But preempting that, Lord Krishna is already telling him that you understand you are a Kshatriya and you are you will be driven by your gunas. So it's important you work in accordance with that, but purify your intention around that work, and that's all you need to do. As opposed to taking up something entirely different. Now it is more uh, enjoyable to be ourselves than to pretend to be someone else. We know that intuitively. Don't you know that? When you have to fake smile and meet people and stuff like that, it is very uncomfortable. So the duties uh, born of nature can be easily performed with stability of mind. The other advantage of it is you can be yourself. You are not in an unnatural position. And then you have a stable mind because it is in accordance with your gunas. You are not repelling your mind. You are not uh, making your mind get into some kind of an artificial or an unnatural position when you are acting in accordance with your gunas. Right? There are further reasons why you should go for that. And the duties of others may seem attractive from a distance and we may think of switching, but that is a risky thing to do. It is fraught with danger, is what thought Krishna said. If they conflict with our nature, they will create disharmony in our senses, mind and intellect. That is a very tricky thing, you know. How do you know until you discover, unless you experiment, how will you discover, not discover who you are, right? Yeah, that process would has to happen, has to take place uh, in life. But once you figure it out, you need to settle down for that is essentially what Lord Krishna is saying. Uh, it can probably take even an entire lifetime to figure out what you're good at, right? But intuitively, you start getting a bit of a sense by God and Guru's grace, um, especially when you are on a spiritual path. Otherwise, it can be a pretty long journey. Yes, Sandhya, you had a question? Um, I was just wondering, um, can um, a lot of it not depend upon our conditioning? So what we were exposed to as we were growing up and that is what we learned how to do and that, that is what we kind of it start is, becoming. It is related to our conditioning for sure. And uh, conditioning is also part of the problem that we have to overcome. If your conditioning is, uh, is uh, in line with the principles more than opinions, then we are in a good spot. If our conditioning is more in line with people's opinions, then we have another thing to climb over. And that is why it is said, Lord Krishna has said that I am going to arrange for a family situation circumstances for you, which will be conducive for your spiritual journey, provided you have made it a priority in your life. So we only choose our family situation circumstances. Uh, but the good thing, the, the, the positive part of it is, you know, when we wake up or when we start getting proper knowledge then we start making the course correction around it because our conditioning would tell you very different things they will your conditioning will tell you to lead a template life oh my god you know this is what you should be doing and if you're not done this by so and so age or so and so uh, you know time then uh, you know that is not right so conditioning is not right and if you go by people's opinions and what people neighbor and relatives are telling or society is telling that <laughs> It's a recipe. It could be a recipe for disaster. So when we have a uh, epiphany or that eureka moment of understanding, you know, the bigger principle, the big picture about it, it then we need to make the most of it. But yeah, I, I get that conditioning does play a big role here. And I will talk about this humorous story about a donkey and a dog, right? So each each one has to perform its own duty. It each has its own role to play. Right? Donkey helps the master. You see the bag, it's loading day in and day out, and that's what it's good at. Dog is good at barking, right? At night, and it both are performing their own job descriptions as per the their resume is what they were hired for. And the donkey thinks, you know, all the love and affection is bestowed on the dog, and I just do all the hard work throughout the day. If I imitate the dog, master will shower a lot of love on me as well. So one of the nights, donkey got excited and he started barking like the dog. And it got the beating of its life from its master. So the point is, we don't simply copy others. Let's, let's focus on what uh, we are supposed to do as opposed to trying to copy anybody else. And then uh, it could be disastrous. And it is fraught with danger is what Lord Krishna is talking about. Uh, so it's very important. See, other aspect of it is you are not driven by... You have your self-confidence and self-awareness. What Lord Krishna is saying, have that awareness. There's no other way out of it. Because if you are always unsure about yourself and you are driven by, you know, what people is doing, what people is saying, this is cool, this is not, then 
it's not a good game plan you'll always be insecure you'll always be looking for shortcut for formulas you'll never have self assurance self confidence about your abilities and it's it's a battle that that is always going to be a losing battle where you are just comparing with others thinking you know maybe i should do this maybe i it's the quicker we get out of that state the better it is and i used to you know really admire people when i was uh, uh, you know growing up in my uh, school days and even college days there were people you know there was a guy in our batch uh, i asked him what do you want to do he said i want to go into research that's why i admire people who go into research okay then i asked him um, i want to sit sit for the campus interviews um, because the companies were coming yeah he said no i said why not he said that i don't want to waste a couple of years there and he was very clear he wanted to go into astrophysics and there was a professor he wanted to work under and uh, he did not sit for any interviews people were saying it's important for you to have a job parents were saying get a job this that you know so many good companies are coming he said no he did that and then there was a guy who was preparing for ias and uh, he said i will prepare for ias as said how will you prepare he said if i don't clear it this year i will go and uh, study in delhi for a couple of years at least a year and give it and then he did not clear it i asked him what is your plan he said um, i will do mn in english now i said that's cool i said okay and then he, then he cleared prelims and made it i said if you have not cleared it what you have done he said i would have done mn in history then but i would have still given ias only so anyways i don't know he might be a little crazy too but the point is if people are clear about what they want to do it's a great asset that means you have already turned a spiritual corner in your life and you will come across people who are confused throughout their life what they want to do they're just trying to copy imitate other people right that means that's that spiritual movement where you start getting awareness about it's not yet arrived so it's very important to get that clarity and it's a great spot to be in when you become clear about this is what i want to do that is also the grace of god not everybody reaches that stage and if you are they like that nothing like it and people like me in college you know, i i had no clue what i wanted to okay i always used to tell okay i would become a tennis player i might have been a soccer player i did not get this that and then i said okay let me sit for a campus interview and they selected me i was happy okay so life just it was like flowing with the river like uh, you go with a herd of sheep right so that is how i did but i used to admire people who had very clarity absolutely clear about what they wanted to do in life and there are very few if you are one of those amazing all right same thing in corporate people are very clear what they want to do and lord krishna is saying telling arjun get to know yourself invest in yourself as opposed to trying to copy somebody else when you do your duty properly then your odds of success in life are much higher as opposed to trying to copy somebody then it is fraught with danger so this is the key message from the shloka um moving on oops are you able to hear some music no no okay hold on give me a sec any question so far before i move further yeah there is a comment from ajit ji if you are copying you will be duplicate rather than the original hero yeah that is true and i have another question that I, if i can quickly so when one is seeking inspiration from another person whom they look up to mm-hmm. versus versus copying someone uh, can you shed some light in kind of draw, drawing a boundary between these two yeah it's been that's true it's, it's again very delicate balance there right in deriving inspiration is a good thing it as long as it helps you succeed something and build on something you are good at but co- blind copy is not basically but yeah inspiration is a no it's basically a positive energy uh and uh, self doubt is not a positive energy we are you're trying to simply copy somebody without having uh, you know that self assurance about yourself so it's a very thin line there you can certainly derive inspiration for our upliftment uh, you know we look up to swami ji as well for that matter right mm-hmm. i would love to copy him in few things certain things which is a good thing right which if it helps so then again beyond a point it becomes more an art than a science right when your intuition would tell you are you in a good spot comfortable spot trying to do that or are you just getting des- more and more desperate when you do that so i think um, 
the 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 peace or the after feeling is a good testimony to know uh, that the reason for which you are uh, you know copying somebody or trying to emulate somebody or derive inspiration is right or not that after feeling would tell you probably that because it will not be followed by some kind of a desperation or lack of peace afterwards right and i mean in some sense can one also say that um if at all copying uh, it, one should try to copy the efforts and the paths that uh, someone we are looking up to has taken rather than just copying the final true you know, we yeah. cannot yeah we, you have to yeah otherwise uh, we will become a pirated copy okay a risky <laughs> copy non functional sort of non functional non functional as well yeah Okay, okay. And any other questions? So, yeah, you, there are a couple of questions actually. So, mm -hmm. one question is from Anamika Ji. Is there a way to receive God's grace in getting the clarity to know exactly what one is good at? Uh, God's grace? Yeah. God's grace can be... There are three ways to get God's grace. Okay. Who's asked this question? Anamika Ji. So, yeah, there are three ways to get God's grace. One is um, we can steal it from him. We can go and steal it from him, okay? God has kept his grace somewhere in his fund. We go and steal it. The second way to get God's grace is to, at gunpoint, we can, you know, uh, scare him like we do that, right? Robberies happen, daylight and robberies happen. We say, God, you give it to me. Otherwise, something bad will happen, okay? I'm warning you for that. Or the third is you beg, beg him for his grace. So I would go for the third one. Unless we have a reason to believe the, you could go for the first two. And his grace also follows a principle. The more sharnagat or surrender you become, uh, the more grace you get. And surrender, the, there are six principles around that. We can bring it to one of our sessions as well. I hope I answered your question. Uh, yes, I guess I guess you did. Uh, okay. And there was another question following up on that uh, from Vandana Ji, that how do we understand what are we good at? Any filter to understand our strength, please. Yeah, it's an ongoing journey, you know, even, you know, I used to say that I'm still trying to figure out what I want to do when I grow up. And I could have said that until maybe a few years back. Now I'm kind of getting a sense what I want to do when I grow up, or at least I'm, I was clear about what I don't want to do when I grow up. Either way, it's fine, but it's an ongoing journey. Um, and I think as, as we start aligning to some of the spiritual principles with God and Guru's grace, that clarity starts dawning on you sooner than later. But in material consciousness, it is a very tricky question to understand unless you have past sanskars and you're very clear about what you want to do. Some people are clear, like I said, right in my college, I, I, I had seen so many people who are very clear about what they want to do in life. I want to do this. I don't want to do this. Uh, so it's an ongoing process and, and it, there's no formula for that. Uh, but we can only pray to God to give us wisdom and clarity of mind so that we can understand and how we can align our skills, what we are good at to, at his lotus feet for his service. But there's no straightforward way. I mean, there are tests, psychological tests and stuff like that, which would tell you what you're good at. You could try those. Um, but other than that, it's, it's, it's an ongoing process, evolutionary process to understand what we are really good at. Um, and actually... Uh, Vandana ji has also asked regarding help with spiritual journaling um, to like I think she's kind of asking pe people um, like among all of us who are doing it and if can help with you know how to go about doing it consistently and sure example. yeah so we will talk about Urvi we will give her some time but before that uh, you know some of the uh, milestones you want to reach you can commit yourself for that uh, I think one of the trackers that we use for that uh, I wanted to talk about a uh, little bit time and then we'll get back to Subhodji as well. I don't know if uh, you're able to hear it or not, if it's going to reduce the one, but if it's okay. Anything you're able to hear or not? No? No, Nitinji. I think something is not right. Anyway, never mind. So I'm going to talk about the dream presentations today, the phenomenal presentations that we had. And uh, the positive thinking award goes to, okay, this is just for fun. Okay? You may not need it, but I'm going to talk about it. So for all the teams, yes, now the music is playing for me, now, but not for you for some reason. Um, let's get started. So to start off with, 
we have our uh, award, first award. So the fantastic performance that was given by our Vinamra team for the comprehensiveness, okay, it was led by Uri so beautifully. You look at the participants, how many participants came. It was a very thoroughly com comprehensive presentation, I must say that. Very well researched too. You know, everybody chimed in. Maharajji's lecture, tidbits were taken. Rupaji is there. You can see Sai Ramji gave a beautiful testimonial around the humbleness aspect. Lakshmiji was there. And Urvi led it beautifully. So for the, and then we had Prabhat's poetry also, which was the icing on the cake around that. So from a comprehensive presentation standpoint, Vinamrit team gets that award. So kudos to the entire team for that. Yay! All right. See, the music would have added a lot of fun. I don't know why you're not hearing the music, but never do mind. By the way, I'm going to put all these presentations one by one in the videos uh, on the YouTube so that all of you can see that and really those moments. Now, from a... Well researched standpoint, we've got Ananya team. Now, Ananya team was very well led by Sri Ramya. I would encourage all the leaders at least you know, to turn on your videos if you could. Uh, you know, how to do Ananya Bhakti. They put in very nice abbreviation for Ananya as well, if you look at it. And they, were, they did a very good research around it. They quoted uh, Bhagavad Gita, Narad Bhakti Darshan, and a lot of Bhagavatam and uh, Ramayan for that matter. So a lot of research was carried out and kudos to the team for putting up such a fantastic performance despite the handicap that they were the first one to go. So they did not know. So there is an advantage of going first and there is a disadvantage of going first. Right? So I'll focus on the aspect that they had that, um, that they, they did a fantastic job. So kudos uh, to Ramya uh, and to your team for the thorough research that you guys carried out. That was an awesome job, um, entire team. Loved your presentation. You know, we had the duo sisters also, right? In this one, remember? Yeah, so duo yeah, sisters in, in were there. Uh, Purvaji and uh, Jigyasa ji, right? Yes. Yeah, Shiram, yeah. So Jigyasa ji and Purva ji was there and it was really well organized content and uh, great leadership, I say, to all of you. Nitin ji or... Uh... Notes are open here. Yeah, that's fine. I wanted to make sure I'm not missing out on any names. All right. So the next one we have is uh, no pages for this one. The team spirit part of it. The way they came all together, you know, like a, you know, men on mission or the team on mission. Shyamji, extremely well led by him. Uh, beautiful presentation. Pallavi ji, Dayatmini sang a beautiful bhajan. Then we had uh, Jyoti, who did a fantastic poetry. Shyamji led that whole conversation so well. And then we had Vandana ji and Shefali chiming in as well. It was an all and out, very, very, um, what do you call that, engaging experience, if you remember, you know, the interaction that followed afterwards. And uh, all of you, I think you put yourself out of your comfort zone, including Shyamji the most. So, from a team spirit standpoint, the reward goes to the selfless team. And uh, I was looking at that video again, and you know, the expression on Shyamji's face because um, it was not a normal, you know, what you call. He doesn't feel comfortable coming and you know leading that presentation that way. But uh, kudos to all of you to put yourself out of your comfort zone, including Shyamji, and you all did a fantastic job. Um, you know, the creativity was there to be seen as well, but team spirit was spot on. And that is where I wanted to call, call, call that out to all of you. And then moving on. All right. You know, this presentation is this. All right. We all know that. So this was, I would say, the enthusiastic team, the creativity and the overall impact it caused. It was amazing. Okay, Monica Ji, you led the team fantastically well. And Abhishek's creativity, Rahul Ji coming in, Suvarna Ji, Ankur Ji coming out of his comfort zone. I would have never imagined, you know, 
he would come out and I, I, I felt he, he felt good after that experience, right? So all of you guys, they, you had the other handicap because you did not come first. Most of your ideas were already exhausted, but you were still able to, you know, break that shell and come up with something that was truly amazing and mind blowing. Okay. So kudos to the team for pulling off something. And this is one of the most creative presentations I've seen and very engaging. So fantastic job and overall impact and the creativity hands, uh, hands down goes to enthusiastic team. Now, since it was the first of its kind, we have made sure that everybody was recognized for one of the things that they did really well. Okay. Going forward, we'll of course make it competitive where we are going to do relative stuff. But in this one, I wanted to make sure everybody's, because you did a fantastic job and you were doing it for the first time, right? So you all did commendable. That, that's something I wanted to call out. Um, and all in all, I would say congratulations to all of you. Um, and you all did a fantastic job. So round of applause to all of you. Let's have a clap for everyone. And I would like to again congratulate and thanks all the leaders for putting it all together and doing such a fantastic job at it. I'm going to put each of one of these presentations as a separate video and share it with the broader community as well so that I can see how much effort and uh, engagement each one of you were able to drive in those beautiful, beautiful presentations. Anything anybody wanted to add on what we showed? Kumarji is asking, uh, do we get an award for giving the applause? <laughs> Yes, see the applause part of it, the music would have added a lot of color. Unfortunately, only I was the one who was listening to the music and nobody else was able to because I put in some effort because it would have added some impact, but I don't know why it was not playing. Uh, uh, but yes, for being an enthusiastic participant and uh, I and uh, you know, and having uh, you know, and participating and engaging with all of them, you get the award hands down, Kumarji. Okay, mm -hmm. we will get the participant of the month award out soon as well. So what I'm thinking is we will probably start giving a handout of Bhagavad Gita or other books of your choice to encourage um, people who put in, um, you know, outstanding work in Seva from time to time. So that is something I'm thinking of initiating. But uh, I would again like to thank and congratulate each one of you for putting in you know, you all are busy, I know, everybody's working and still you were able to come together, inspire each other and put together these presentations, which was phenomenal and really, really commendable. So thank you again and congratulations to all of you. Um, we did not do relative ranking on purpose because each one of you were like, you put in a lot of hard work. So it was a very difficult uh, thing, you know, just to go through these presentations and say, okay, this is good. This is better. This is this, right? Because everybody did it from the bottom of their heart and, and they just put in a lot of good effort around it. But then we will have some competitive assignments coming your way as well, because we can always raise the bar in Seva as well. But for this assignment, I really want to congratulate you and encourage you to do more of it, the same spirit that you have demonstrated in, in, in your presentations. Okay, let's take a few hands if you want to add something more to it. Okay, uh, I guess Monica ji wants to add related to this topic. So probably I'll take her first. Radhe Radhe Monica ji. Congratulations. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. I Thank you very much. Presentation had. Thank you so much. I, I want to congratulate each and everyone who participated in this so-called competition. I would, I would say divine competition or whatever. <laughs> but then if we put things in perspective, initially when we started, uh, at least at least I and the team, right? And then I could I could feel the same kind of vibe from other teams also that abhi, se time nikalenge? you know, aise karenge, aise karenge. but now if you actually think we are the chosen ones and I really, really request everybody to think about it and join one of the teams and see what fun it is. I mean, I would like to be like part of this engagement like forever. So thank you for choosing us, Nitinji, Sandhya Ji. Very nice. And I'll tell you thank about you. Seva one more thing. When Hanumanji had met Vibhishan, right? So Vibhishan said, okay, you know, I speak Ram's name every day. Why his grace has not yet come upon me? Mm -hmm. So Anwan said a very technical point there. He said, you, you take Ram Naam, okay, and I am doing Ram Kaj. So start doing Ram Kaj also. Okay, that will make yes. a lot of difference. So when you Absolutely. 
Yeah, so when you supplement the naam with kaj also, that is the seva, you know, you the bliss that you will feel and uh, the transformation that it starts bringing about is a matter of realization only. Right. And this, this I just one other thing, Anitaji, uh, this knowledge that we're gaining every day needs some kind of provision, which can only happen when you do this. Because uh, when we when we were doing our presentation and when Maharaj says that jitna bhav aap unhe denge, utta unko karna padega, right? Wo yeah. yeah. first cheez mujhe boli thi about. But then, uh, or we kehte na first and last order, so kuch chalte rata hai. <laughs> but then when I heard that making presentation, things have changed. And you know, I, I really can't explain it because the essence of it will go. I want everybody to experience this, which is why I'm encouraging everybody. Please join some team. Enthusiastically join kar sakte. Jo bhi team join karna chahu. <laughs> but then please join. <laughs> so, thank See, you. Abhi, you got a new member, na? Mahi ji. <laughs> Mahi, yes. Mahi is our, let's give a hand applause for Mahi, who's our uh, new yeah, investment in the seva. So congratulations, Mahi. And we have lined up some assignments. When you'll do it, you will realize. See, I'm telling you, I used to hear Swamiji's uh, discourses previously also. And then they will come and go. They will come and go. But now yes. after, you know, I've been given the seva. Now when they stick, they stick at a different level altogether. Okay. And that's only because of the grace. I understand that. So when we get engaged, start getting engaged in seva, a lot of dynamics start changing because now we are getting Ram Kaj also we are doing. So very nice. Ram yes, Ram. you wanted to say something as well. And then Subodji had a question, I believe. So we can take his question. And uh, Ajit Ji has also said that this is the best example of satsang by involving everyone. So I just wanted to mention. Please sign up for our teams and we have a lot of exciting uh, assignments that we are going to take. We are going to do the Shastra Manthan as part of the Seva. We'll make sure each one of you gets to do something that you can gain a lot out of in the process. Okay, so that is how we, we are going to de design the sevas going forward and you have everything to gain around it. Okay, all we need is the, you know, the time that you can get around it and you are the biggest beneficiary from that seva end of the day. Yes, Urvi? Yes, Urvi, Radhe Radhe, please go ahead. Radhe Radhe, um, I just wanted to add now, like, first of all, congratulations to all the teams and uh, just two things, like uh, when I started my journey, there were two things in my mind. Uh, first was, I won't speak to people. I won't connect with people. Forget about worldly people, not even those who are on the spiritual path. I'll just be all by myself. This was the first thing. And the second thing was that I have so much to study. I don't have time for anything else. These two things I started with. And then I realized that one thing, satsang is very important. And when you actually connect with like-minded people, you're much, much more positive, happy, more, uh, you know, inspired. And it's very, very important to be with and connect with like-minded people. And to join one of the seva teams, we connect with each other. We, like, cooperate, speak to each other and come up with new things. So that is a very good way for satsang as well. And the second thing is, I thought I don't have time for seva. But to be true, I was wasting so much time throughout the day and my time still gets wasted. But I have it in mind that I'm wasting time. I have these things to do. And then, you know, at least I'll reduce that amount. I don't waste so much time now. So I have the same time. But in that time, I'm studying more and I'm also doing seva. So these two things, you know, they're just, I'm just liking it. <laughs> and it's good. I see a little bit progress in myself. So I also encourage everybody to join the Seva teams and then we can do it. Like we have time for Seva as well and it's a good satsang. Beautiful. Very motivational speech, Urvi. Loved it. See, time is God. We've seen in Mahabharata, Jesus said, Main same hu. Same time is also God. And we are all given, you know, we are all given the same amount of time in a day. And it is with great fortune and with God's and Guru's grace, it happens that your time is put to good use. So your time, your money, for it to get put to good use, where it is, you know, getting utilized for something good is also possible with God and Guru's grace only. Right? Otherwise, time will fritter away and it that's how our life, life passes by. So if we can put a vessel of seva on our time, there's no better gift we can give to ourselves because time will find its ways. 
where it goes no idea i don't know i mean what i was doing uh, before i got into seva i mean time would go it would find its way in usual thing worldly things and then before we realize the life has passed by so if we can put a vessel to it because time i'm saying is god right it is nothing can be more pleasing to god we have we have utilized every moment of our life like swami ji does i mean we are not there yet but the more moments we can utilize of our life the better we have we will eventually become everything is there for us to gain only so if you can put a vessel to your time that would be one of the best gifts you can give to yourself because time will find its way when we are not doing anything interesting trust me okay nothing interesting we are earning money we are accumulating money we are accumulating worries we are accumulating anxieties and then we are passing it on to take people around okay including the money and that's all our plan of life is nothing else nobody is doing anything interesting in life trust me um you know if you are if serving humanity and all that stuff that is fine uh, it could happen in you know in in pieces but for most part of our life our endeavor mental effort is all about you know accumulating stuff and then passing it on to the next generation or worrying about unnecessary things so the sooner we can put a better uh, vessel the better off we will be uh, in the life uh, remaining life to come as well okay i think so, subhash um, has been raising his hand for a while and then we'll take abhishek and ajit ji and can i quickly make announcements sure as well as, so as you have heard from all these inspiring people that seva is a must and i think many of you might have felt charged about it so please fill the feedback tracker if you want to be part of any of the four seva teams we have really really exciting projects assignments uh shastra manthan uh, opportunities coming up so please please fill in the feedback tracker put in your name you can be part of any of the four teams so that's first thing and then there are three more announcements so swami ji is presently in delhi so there will be there is satsang uh, on each of these days till uh, april 10th so do try to go and catch up with swami ji and attend the satsang you will remember it for entire life that i can say for sure um then family camp is coming up i have put the details over there so those who have not yet registered please consider registering yourself and for all those who are in dallas and especially those who are new to dallas there is an open house at the radha krishna temple uh, on april 8th saturday um, from 12 pm to 2 pm so consider visiting the temple there's a lot of opportunities to, to socialize and understand what all activities does radha krishna temple does so that's it thank About you sir for each of the team captains and the co captains we will give you a platform where you can come and make a speech on to why the people should join your team okay so maybe every tuesday or one of these days you can come for 5 minutes talk about the exciting stuff your team is doing and make a pitch okay? election campaigning <laughs> that will be your own campaign to tell the exciting stuff uh, that you have planned for them and you've been doing and we'll open up the enrollment okay so let's make it that way every tuesday you don't have to make signs you can come and talk about it and enroll people open appeal for everyone okay <laughs> all right yes subodh ji you wanted to say something yes and some people are asking for today's sessions uh, youtube recording that will uh, yes. be there in a week from now and you will be informed about it yeah and please fill out the feedback tracker as well or you can ask questions uh, or otherwise um, i read through it and if there is questions i try to bring it during the sessions as well but other than that you can simply say hello okay that is also perfectly okay yes uh, subodh ji yeah. something so thank you for waiting yeah. Radhe Radhe. Yeah, Radhe Radhe. Radhe Radhe, Nidin sir. Sir, I had one question about that self discovery, which uh, which we spoke some time back. Uh, uh, sometimes there is a thin line between ego and self respect. So, how to identify that? For that, I will give one example. Now, suppose some elderly relative invites you for a religious function at his house, but he talks to your wife, but not to you. but now as a protocol usually they talk to husband and then uh, then uh, then the, to the wife but now in this case even though they are elderly in age to me uh, sometimes that protocol is not followed now in them my mind and it come 
is that was he not okay. intending me to come? I can't uh, understand. My fears told that. Yeah, fears told. Yeah, correct. And so in that case, then is it my ego or is it my self respect that I am downing and still attending at function or whether he doesn't really want to talk to me? That is not the case. But then he he is a elderly person to me, much double the age than me. Then sometimes that creates. Uh, yeah, most of conflict. the ashanti, ashanti or the lack of the peace in this world is because of you know expectation of man and avoidance of apman. Okay, so Shishtashtakam, uh, Chaitanya yeah. Mahaprabhu has given a beautiful verse, four principles. If we simply mm -hmm. align to them, our life will become a success. He says, Trina Dapi Suni Chain, that become more humbler than a braid of grass, Taro Rupi Sahishnuna, more tolerant than a tree. Amanen Manaden, the third one is the most one. Don't expect basically or crave for respect rather than think of giving respect to others. And Kirtaniya Sadhari, always remember God. So this expectation of getting, if you can simply tolerate it, you know, it will be very purifying. A bad day for ego is a good day for the soul. So, because we are not able to tolerate, we keep on inflating our egos. Simply tolerate it. What has changed? Nothing has changed. I'll be happy if somebody tol talks to my wife. At least I don't have to worry about talking to her for a while, right? But the point here is, but maybe a little more uh, nuanced there. Uh, but the point yeah. is, people are, I mean, you can't control people. It's nothing to do with self. You just tolerate it. Nothing has changed for you in life as such. So, that's why I'm saying, if you can take a hit on your ego and not expect man from people rather than think of giving respect rather than if somebody gives you man leave it there only don't take it to your head that is the right way in spirituality so this verse trinandapi suniche and taro it is basically a four step principle for us to evolve spiritually so that is where we need to uh, look at it from that lens and it will be very helpful okay thank you thank no you yes abhishek Wonderful, wonderful, Nitin ji. Thank you. Uh, what? Abhishek. Not talking to wife or the other message? That you talk to anyone here. <laughs> okay. I am just talking about this. Uh, okay. This just, 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 just making sure. Okay. What you found? <laughs> okay. Yes, okay. Abhishek ji, Radhe Radhe. Yes, uh, Radhe Radhe. Uh, so, like before uh, joining, uh, like the Seva group, uh, I used to be very negative. I mean. I would mean, like uh, depressed even after connecting with JK or and so many things. And when people approach me to serve, it was the excuse that I have my mind disturbed, I have to be stable karlo, and then I will do serve. But then uh, slowly I started with uh, liking the posts on community portal and then commenting. I, I used to be regular in that thing at least. Like din ka do, say, 5 minutes was enough for that. But then slowly, slowly wo ads create hote ki, chalo, aur karte hai, aur karte hai. and uh, Honestly, now I'm at that position ki bilkul, like jo negativity pehle aati thi, utni nahi aati hai. and I feel very peaceful. And time ka jo bhi, uh, excuses me apne aap ko diya karta tha, wo bilkul nahi hai. Office ka kaam bhi ho jata hai, sab chize bhi apne aap ho rahi hai. Aur jaise Nitin ji ko poochta hai tha ki, how do you feel like an instrument? Like mere, mere ko to feel nahi hota. I always feel like the doer. But that feeling is also like starting to come in. So I would advise everyone here, please do engage in seva. Start up, uh, the basics you can do. Like Instagram post, like karna hai, jo bhi hai, usme regular hai na aapko, consistency. And dheere, 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 wo build up hota jayega. So please start it. Rade, rade. See, listen from people who have started doing seva, right? Selfless seva all by themselves. Their experience should give us enough testimonial to say, you know, this works. There is something magical that happens. Trust it. Trust the process and jump into it and see what happens. By the way, we have a, another seva coming up for some videos over the next 10 days. We'll talk separately about it. If you're interested, sign up for it. There cannot be anything more uplifting than getting engaged in seva and life. Okay, so Do sign up for something. I'm telling you, I have all the time in the world ever since I started doing seva. Not that I have a very simple job. Okay, it takes my attention for at least 8 to 10 hours of intense work. But I, I'm just relaxed. And it's only because of the seva that I'm doing on a day-to-day -day basis. When I don't have Bhagavad Gita session, in those days, I'm a little, you know, my mind is doing a little bit of tricks. I know that. But because of this seva, it's like everything's like a cakewalk. Every day goes like this. Because I know there's something at the back of my mind related to Bhagavad Gita going on. So that is how seva does wonders for you. Otherwise, your life will 
tire you down and you will never get time i'm telling you what kids and then they need to grow up and then we have this so many excuses your mind will give you you will never get time maya will tire you make you dance for the rest of eternity but never give you a break only way to get a break is to start aligning to doing seva for god and see how maya starts aligning at that point and that is something you can experience it so jump into it don't think about it if you are still sitting on the fence yes ajit ji yeah if anybody is interested in experiencing miracles take up yes. seva okay. yes miracles every day all miracles. the time <laughs> true okay ajit ji and then ajit ji please go ahead. comment my comment was on on this topic itself that uh, difference between the bhakti rituals religion versus spirituality the spirituality provides you the experience every moment when you are bhakti or kirtan you will get enjoyment only at that moment and spiritual will transform your life bit True. by bit so satsang is necessary and during the discussion there was a point uh, the difference between inspiration versus copying so nothing like the best example of on this uh, hanuman uh, janmotsav that uh, hanuman ji was the devotee of rama ananya bhakt and mirabai was also devotee so we can take example of them that hanuman ji find out his strength to cross over the sea so true so like that not necessary that we should copy same thing that we should keep uh, ram and sita in our heart that is a different thing so inspiration is that we should be devotee but in our own unique way radhe radhe beautiful ajit ji and very nice example you gave about hanuman ji so similar to hanuman ji we will also find a jamuvant in our life god will send that to us okay when we start aligning to some of his teachings so jamuvant will come to your life and then jamuvant will tell you this is what you are good at and then you will also become like hanuman that is how the process goes yes sir we yes uh Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, I had a question uh, that today we discussed. Uh, like, uh, we have to find out what we are good at, and the other thing is that uh, we decide what we want to do. So, if we have not found out what we are really good at, but if we kind of decide what we want to do, then is it okay? And maybe the same thing. I don't know. I just wanted to ask. love what you do until you find something that you love right okay. we cannot be complaining <laughs> so we need to love something that we do because we have to do it well and then until we find something that we love until that happens we have to still do what is is it right i'm like if i am supposed to study and i say i don't like it it's it will not fly we have to nurture those uh, sentiments that it is important because of so and so reason and then we force our mind to cultivate those sentiments and you know to do things because at the time of uh, uh, that is something we have to you know something is important for us at particular stage of life and we have to force our mind to like it because that might be stepping stone for us for something higher right so if i had not studied have not gone into engineering then i don't think anybody then i would have gotten a job and if i hadn't gotten a job i don't think i would have done mba or come to here in the us and if that wouldn't have happened i don't think i would have met swami ji and if that wouldn't have happened i don't think we will be sitting here today right so one thing has led to another to another not that i loved everything i just forced myself oh my god you know who's going to do this engineering i was i'm telling you i was a, a bad engineer and a horrible doctor i would have been but then i thought you know it's better to mess around with machines than mess around with humans because if i was a doctor i would be killing people and here breaking code is okay you know my boss will scream at me but i'm not playing with lives and somehow i continue to survive right and one thing let i mean so things do settle down after a while so till we figure out what we are good at you continue persisting and being smart with what you are doing somehow we have to sail through that time period okay thank you we keep waiting for the perfect thing that we love then we may be losing time right and then uh, so we got to be a little smart around what we supposed to do at a particular thing 
ओके समथिंग लाइक दैट so what they do to krishna is that like the self talk in uh, with krishna that oh krishna you are like doing like this okay you don't want me to do your seva okay no problem so i feel like krishna is telling me oh you are doing emotional damage to me ha okay okay fine then uh, the thing i see that automatically gets settled uh, and office like uh, the colleagues they tell me that Okay, no problem. It sorted out, and then mom is stopped calling me. So it's a little mystic kind of, and all these things happen. So I automatically get the time, and I I don't feel like it's an obstacle, so I can continue the seva, direct seva. I mean, very nice. Yeah, where there is a will, there is a way. We find way, right? And then we can take every obstacle as a, uh, you know, like Krishna is testing us. Am I able to surmount it or not? So. different self talk that can inspire us uh, towards seva and help us continue doing what we are supposed to do as a commitment great example dyashini thank you for sharing that and um, yes and manisha ji has uh, said for urvi uh, do whatever you do do it with full involvement uh, soon you will become uh, you will come to know uh, what you are best at this is what she is also doing I'm following these days Jesus. very nice very nice thank you manisha ji yeah urvi i can understand you know i've gone through this journey and it it's not so straight forward right you're stuck at something you want to do something else and you're not sure what you're good at so it's a, not a good situation to be in to manisha ji you know it's a very good word of wisdom that you have provided so for people who have gone through that experience you can help us out you know that is why we have this forum please uh, maybe we can create a thread and talk about you know how what do we do in this kind of a situation so a bit of experimentation goes and then we keep praying to god he will find some way for way out for us yes swati ji radhe 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 swati ji yeah radhe radhe initially when i also started seva no i i was usually before anybody used to tell me i was still i don't have time i, I have my work you don't tell me you do it yourself like my this at your voice when i started doing that i started i i have to take out my time for seva okay now is it okay yeah now it's fine now is it okay yeah no so i think was not getting time to do seva now so it is not have time to do you may have to fix your audio um, swati ji we are not able to hear you let's hear from manish ji in the meantime and then subod ji yes manish ji please go ahead radhe 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 nitin ji sandhya ji and everyone um so regarding urvi so i was in a similar situation you know i uh, i was i went into the healthcare field and went through the studies graduated did associateship and then i found i didn't like it so i changed to it and it's uh, it's important to follow our passion so i've been doing it now for the last 25 years so it's uh just say whatever interest you follow that because everything else kind of takes care of itself so uh, don't go after the money go after your passion what you're passionate about because now the it i've been doing this for 25 years it doesn't feel like a job it feels like a uh, like a hobby even though it's work but it's because i like doing it so thank you radhe radhe thank you manish very nice Yeah, I mean, different paths you can pick up. Basically, if you can make your work play, you will not have to work any more day, right? That's what Swami Ji says. I think Octavian had given this thing. But yeah, sometimes you you just uh, 
put exert yourself in whatever comes your way because if you wait for your you know that perfect job or passion then time may keep passing by it may put you in a spot of bother as well if you ask me honestly i'm i'm just not a fit for it at all i don't have that temperament i was i don't know what i liked but maybe playing and other things but somehow i've been surviving and i'm doing decently i would say if you ask in my office they will say i do good job but internally i know i'm not good at it i'm somehow surviving but yeah you continue to persist with what comes your way and see where it takes you at times right but don't shy away for that perfect thing that would come your way because if it doesn't come your way a lot of time would have passed by in that case right and then what is your end goal and how soon you can enable yourself towards that goal if that big picture is clear i think standing on your feet and being financially independent and picking up a job that you love would be a bonus in that case right but standing on your feet becoming independent that should be your priority right especially if you want to if we harbor ambitions of being independent in our life but again depending upon the station of life you are and what is important for you you have to you can take a call and then swami ji is there for your guidance always right so you always have that your life is already set in that sense yes uh, subodh ji and swati ji will come back to you uh, i know we are a little over so tomorrow maybe, maybe we have to skip today's segment but we can take maybe two more questions and then wrap it up subodh ji yeah uh, i think one question To, to counter this shakuni niti because in this material world I, most of them are shakuni only to to counter this shakuni niti should we resort to Krish, sri krishna niti or sri ram niti we no matter how the other behave with us we have to we have go by the way or should we resort to sri krishna niti like means something more than like tit for tat or let it be because then in the from the gita then So we resort to Gita and can say that for Shakuni Niti, this Krishna Niti is appropriate. Yeah. So yeah. basically, so, it is said you have to use your buddhi in the world. We need to have our armor around always, but yes. we need to draw lines there as well, right? If somebody is going really down, we don't lower our level at that point, right? So by maintaining our level or by raising our level, we can counter it. that is the key or maybe lift them along with us that is even better but for us to lower our level just because you know we have somebody like that around us is not good for conducive for our spiritual growth buddhi to an extent that we are building sufficient resilience around us so that you know it's not a penetrating your armor but not beyond that and i have seen people who have survived in corporate world sticking to their values and i have seen even spiritual religious people there was a devout christian i have seen by following those practices and not going by the mainstream practices that people do in sales they have been successful god supports you when you stick to truth when you stick to your values you get you know intangible support from god in in ways that we can't understand you know it will not make sense from a corporate standpoint i'll tell you warren buffett i don't know if he's religious or spiritual or not some of his principles that he follows you know he bails out people mm-hmm. he'll pick up some business who's going in doldrums if you yeah. go by purely you know the financial um, what you call that uh, common understanding around you know some of the concepts you will say this man is a crazy man some of the deals that he made in the past but it will turn your model upside down the way he goes about it but he's more most successful investor now so some of the things you can't understand when you do it out of some bigger picture in your mind maybe philanthropy or maybe something he he would invest in his relatives and people who are not doing anything uh, just to help them out initially right and now he's so we don't know what kind of help we may start getting from god uh, as as long as we are sticking to our values uh, but we still have to use our intellect and buddhi in this world we don't become dumb dealing with people but that does not mean you you stoop yourself to their level you can still maintain your level or or raise it even further so that they are forced to raise their game and if we can survive that way we get help from god also he knows where we are going by our he may test you but in long run it you will be the winner this has to happen that way okay thank you sir thank you very much very nice thank you nitin ji next is 
Swati ji, once again, I'll try if now her voice is clear. Yes, Swati ji, if your thing is there and then yeah. we can wrap it up. Rate, rate. Now and... is it audible? Yes. Is it okay? Yeah. 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 Uh, thank you. <laughs> thank you for the award, Nitinji, first of all. And I was just telling that regarding Seva, when earlier before Chikyo, I was like, I don't have time to do anything. If anybody tells me you do this, I, I tell them that I have a lot of work. I, I can't do your work. It was like that. I didn't have time. And since JK, when I have come and I've started doing seva, many of time it's like I have time. I have to take out time. Seva ko karna hai, to it automatically get like wo time matna up nickel jate patani kese ajate. And I do that seva. And somebody comes and disturb me in seva. I'm like, oh Krishna, now you are testing me. You're telling you you want me to see irritate. I get angry. You want my progress. So you're giving me situation. But in that seva, I'm calm. Okay. If somebody is disturbing, let it be. I'll do their work and then again sit for my seva. So that thing has come and then that progress is also happening. And then sometime I want to do seva. I'm like, oh, my husband will kill. He will tell me, no, don't do this. Keep, uh, don't do, uh, attend the session of this uh, mobile. <laughs> because every time they keep on telling me like that, what is this daily you're uh, listening morning, 8.30 or 7.30, you go and sit on the mobile for one hour, uh, keeping the work ahead uh, side. So I am like, okay. So family support bhi jata hai kabhi kabhi. Like I want to do some seva and suddenly uh, her husband comes late. So that time I can use for my seva. <laughs> I don't know how it happened because I was like, oh, he will come, he will come, he comes at five o'clock. And then I'm sitting for the seva and then right now, oh, he will be coming by five o'clock. And suddenly that day he comes by 5.50. Okay, then 15 minutes my seva is done. <laughs> it's like that, that God arranged for the time for me to get that Amazing. seva done. Thank you. Radhe, Radhe. Radhe, Radhe. Beautiful Swati ji. I'll tell you my own experience. When I started with this seva, I was like, it is, I don't know how it's going to work out. I have my commute one hour, one way. And while coming back, I used to travel one, one hour every day, one way, getting two hours of commute. And this presentation, if you have to prepare, and you know, you don't do it over the weekend and you can't think so much far ahead, maybe a couple of days in advance. I was like, I don't know how it's going to work out, you know, with my job, commute and all that stuff. But amazingly, it started working on COVID came. I'm not saying COVID was sent for this purpose, but I got work from home and now it's it's so easily managed now, you know, with my day-to-day -day routine that uh, somehow God just makes it happen. When you just put in, it's like you just jump into it and he'll make it happen. And Swatiji, your experience, thank you for sharing that as well. Yes, uh, Sumeshi, you wanted to say something? Anything other than your meditation, please? <laughs> Please go ahead. Rade, Rade. Today, question is Swamiji has say, said that in in the Satya Yuga, bad bad person is in other lokas. Yeah. In the in the Teta Yuga, bad person is other other country. And uh, in the Dwapar, you bad person in the family. And in this Kali Yuga, bad person in him, uh, myself, in everyone. So how how to how to acquire on, 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 on them? How to question? Missed sure. so Mishi, everything else, but when you said question, it it got blown away with the wind. How to conquer uh, myself? Uh, so हमारे अंदर दोनों दोन, दोनों प्रकार की प्रवृत्तियां हैं अच्छी और बुरी जिसको हम ज़्यादा पोषण करेंगे वो ज़्यादा प्रभावशाली और 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 सशक्त होती चली जाएगी। So more we feed, whichever qualities we feed more, दैविक गुणा और और दासुरी गुणा, that will start becoming more powerful. So it's all in our hands, which one we want to attach to more. If we have negative thinking, then we are making the bad person person in us um, stronger. If we are feeding positive energy, uplifting wholesome thoughts. We are making the good person in us stronger. So it really depends on which dog inside you, you are feeding. So that choice is always us. So when you do satsang, you are making the good person powerful. When you're going to kusang, you're making the other person powerful. So 
it's a balanced thing. Um, so we need to associate with seva, satsang, and sadhana to conquer the bad, bad, bad part of ourselves. It's both residing in us only. Very true. Thank, thank you, thank you. thank you so much. Great question, by the way. I hope all of you got that right. It's a very interesting thing in Satyug. The the evil resided in other planets. Then in Treta, um, uh, it it uh, it came in the other country, India and Sri Lanka, right? And then in Dwapar, it came within the same family, Kauravas and Pandavas. And in Kalyugs, it's within you only. So if God were to remove the evil, he would have to remove all of us. Because evil in this, all of us. So we only have to conquer evil step by step. And that was what Sumeshji asked. Very nice question. Very fundamental. And Ajit, question. Yeah, and Ajit ji also added to the answer saying, uh, attending JKO satsang on daily basis is the way to overcome the evil within us. We have 100 plus sessions going on. So if you have it in your routine, you're already taken a big leap towards... Uh, removing that evil or dirt in your mind. Now, that is a different matter. After attending the session, it's like Kunjar Shachivat, they say in our scriptures that you put the dust back on. Okay? If you do that, then you're not doing yourself a favor. But if you're taking that and building on it, then that cleaning job is happening. Right? Where is the Golok Bunny here? Okay. Okay, I'm glad Golok Bunny is back. In her original avatar. Okay, good. Are we good for the day then? I think we'll continue tomorrow. We have a shorter session tomorrow. We will do a recap quiz and we'll talk about what is true success. What is true success in life? And I've never come across any more comprehensive definition than what Swamiji has given us. So we'll talk about it tomorrow. So look forward to that discussion as well. And again, congratulations to all the Seva team. You guys were phenomenal outstanding i fall short of words okay so fantastic and i'm sure some people would have signed up in feedback tracker today but we we will have our captains make sales pitch and not resort to sign languages start coming in every week and start making a pitch for your team okay you get five minutes to get as creative as you want five to ten minute presentations whatever you want to do or talk simple talk as well swarnaji you have more assignments coming your way you may have to roll more rotis or uh, maybe something else this time. Okay. Awesome. Yes. Great. Himangini ji, thank you for turning on your video. Prabhat, thank you. Uh, today, I'm glad you are not taking any risk while driving the car. And Sumesh, she always does that. And uh, Sam, we see two or three different avatars. So, great. So thank you again. Good night. Good day. I'll see you tomorrow. Radha Radha from my side. Thank you, everyone. Um, get up for the quiz tomorrow and uh, good night, good day, Radha Radha. Will be your tracker tomorrow, by the way. Sorry, we ran out of time, but we'll do it tomorrow. Okay. Yes, yes. And I guess even uh, we have a special presentation also tomorrow. Shri Ramya. Yes, both. Yeah. Both awesome. will do tomorrow. Okay. Radha Radha. Radha Radha from my side. Good night, good day.